Hello, this is Elizabeth Harms with Washington High School in the Physics Department, and we are going to be covering the second lecture on the electricity unit. And we have covered how electric circuits work, whether they're open or closed, and what a circuit diagram looks like. And now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the difference between current, voltage, resistance, and power. And then also show those relationships between Ohm's law. And again, you don't need to write everything down. Ms. Hobbs will model what kind of notes you need to be taking on the whiteboard. But this is probably one of the second to last times that she's actually going to do that. You're going to need to be able to determine what's important and what's not. So concepts and words that keep being repeated multiple times, you need to know the definition. And you probably need to know what the symbol is, what the unit is, and what the water analogy is, just in order for a preview there. So... We did our, we are going to be doing an investigation between resistance and Ohm's law. And the question that you're going to investigate after we're done with this PowerPoint is what is the relationship between current voltage and resistance? We're going to provide you background information enough to be able to answer that question. And the objective is for you to be able to measure resistance and use a multimeter and then also be able to identify Ohm's law and show what the relationships are between these variables. Okay, so this is the analogy that we're going to be repeating over and over again. So you're going to need to make a chart that talks about the different variables within this uh, picture. So the first thing that we're familiar with is the water or the... Next, we all know about voltage. And voltage, don't use voltage because voltage and power get confusing. Use electrical potential energy. And that's basically what the water pressure is. How much stuff you could get done because of the water pressure. Now, in almost all electrical appliances, there is a resistor that controls how much energy there is available to go to the appliance. Because if we fed all the energy available in the outlet to the appliance, the appliance would blow up. Blow up. So we create a resistor that controls how much energy can actually get to the appliance so that the appliance doesn't blow up or that the appliance does not have enough energy. So this valve here can be considered that. And then finally, power is what work is actually being done over a certain amount of time. And that unit is in watts. So the variables that you should have in your table are current, voltage, resistance, and also power. And we'll go through what those units and symbols are here in a moment. Um, that image was from kzar.com, by the way. And we'll talk about what current is now. So imagine just tiny little stuff flowing through, and that little stuff flowing through, the little water molecules, would be the electric current. And the unit for current, filling in the chart, is called amps or amperes. Of course, it was discovered by a gentleman with the last name of amp. And one amp that is a certain flow of, or excuse me, a certain, one amp is a flow of a certain quantity of electricity in one second. So how it's going, okay, how much is passing through at one time. So here we've got an electric current of one amp. If we had double or triple, we'd have three amps. That's one of the reasons why speakers are rated in amps. The more current you have, the more ability to uh, pound it out, I guess. That's the term. Um, yep, the amount of electric current entering a circuit always equals the amount exiting the circuit. None of the current disappears. None of that... Um, flow goes away, it just is less able to do work. We'll talk about that. So we've got example of an open and a closed circuit here, or just two closed circuits. And it really doesn't matter which way a, the positive and negative ends are connected, the current's going to flow. You noticed in your multimeters you had a 1, a negative 1.5, or a positive 1.5. That was just measuring how, which direction the current was flowing. It's like, um, rowing upstream or downstream. The water is still flowing one direction. It just depends on your perspective of which way it's going. Okay, so voltage is another variable we're entering in our table. And I really don't use voltage, just think of it as electrical potential energy. And that is the height of a cliff that the water will be falling down or in our previous slide, how much water pressure there is. Okay, think of it like gravitational potential energy. How much potential energy is there available in order to do light up a light bulb or get a task done? Which measures in volts, which is a capital V. And the voltage difference of one volt means one amp of current does one joule of work in one second. 
So that's why higher voltages can be much more dangerous is because they can potentially do a lot more work in a short amount of time. So if your body or a little squirrel's body is on a transformer with a high voltage, that is, means you're going to probably be dead soon. You're going to be fried because of all the current that's going through. And as we found out, when there's a lot of current going through, there's a lot of heat that's generated and that happens. So imagine all that heat that's going through because of the energy that's going through is literally can cook your organs. Right? So that's one of the issues of electrical electrocution. Um, and it overwhelms your nervous system and you die because of that probably before your organs get cooked, but still. All right, voltage difference causes current to flow. Because of this difference in the, the charges, uh, you have to have it flow and then come back because you just cannot have a buildup of electrons. You use a multimeter. We've adjusted the dial here to measure current, resistance, and amps. And we know the red probe and the black probe already. We've determined what the potential voltage is. And again, this is the water analogy. The higher the, the height is, the more potential energy there is. If you don't have a voltage difference, you don't have a lit bulb. That's why batteries run out of juice after a while, is the different metals are in equilibrium with their electrons. And so the battery dies. There's no voltage difference. The light doesn't come on because it is now an open circuit instead of a closed circuit. Batteries. We've made batteries before. Remember the penny batteries with the nickel and the copper and the dielectric material, which was vinegar and salt? We've talked about how, why battery acid is so corrosive. is because it needs to carry those electrons through. Um, we also realized that we can add, um, if one of your penny batteries didn't work, we usually added a few more pennies that added cells that added enough voltage to turn the LED light bulb on. We've got batteries acting like a pump. And then here is our water wheel analogy. And maybe we need to write this down in our chart too. So the pump is the voltage, the water doing the work is the current. Uh, the water wheel could be considered the resistance and the what direction of the flow would be how you would have an open and a closed circuit. So make sure that that is filled in. We measure current, it's gotta pass through the meter so you need to create a open circuit and then use the multimeter to carry the circuit through. Okay. We've got alternating and direct current. Most things are in alternating current now. And we've talked about fuses, or we will talk about fuses. Uh, fuse is basically acting like a resistor where it prevents too much current from flowing through. So you've had a fuse box blown, blown when lightning strikes your house because there was so much current fuse box wanted to protect the electric circuitry. It blew up, it opened up the circuitry so that the current couldn't pass through, saved your appliances, and probably saved your house. Okay. So the multimeter is what they're worried about. They want to protect that multimeter. If you run too much current through it, it's not going to work. Likewise, you've got to run some current through it in order to measure the voltage and all those kinds of things. So this is not the way to do it, and this is the right way to do it. Um, we got circuit breakers and fuses. I can tell you that a circuit breaker is much better than a fuse box. When they talk about insurance rates for houses, older houses in the 50s and 60s still have fuse boxes. Younger houses have circuit breakers. So the insurance difference between an old house and a new house is much different because an old house has much more of a fire hazard than a new house because a circuit breaker is a more sophisticated way of um, measuring what the current is in the house. And we've got some diagrams that talk about how to measure voltage, current, and resistance. Put it to the sides, put it to the side so that the current rolls through. This is not going to work because, again, you need a complete circuit in order for it to happen. So you've got a complete circuit here, and that's going to help you measure what you need to measure. Resistance. How is how a measure of how strongly an object resists current flowing through it? So there's not a whole lot of resistance. The water just keeps flowing through. High resistance. And a resistance is basically how much work needs to be done in order for the object to go. 
the relationship between electric current and resistance can be compared with water flowing from, a, from the open end of a bottle to the closed end of a bottle. Total amount of resistance in a circuit determines the amount of current in the circuit for a given voltage. So you notice when we hook these things together, if we just have one bulb, it's very bright. We have two bulbs, we've got twice the resistance, we have half the current, the current's going between each of the bulbs, and we have a less bright bulb. Okay. If we have three bulbs, which is in series, we have one third of the current going to each bulb, and so since one third of the current is there, we have less of the energy being able to travel through, and hence less work is being done. Resistance is measured in ohms, and it is usually indicated by a capital R. And so this is a good uh, review. The volt is the electrical potential energy. The ohms is the measure of how much resistance. The amp is the measure of how much current, and that is indicated by a capital I. And ohms is abbreviated by O of the omega symbol. And here are the relationships, and we'll talk about those here in a moment. Ohm's law, you should probably write this down, and it can be rearranged in a triangle form that Ms. Hobbs will write on the side of the board. This is what this means. If you were to take a picture, this is a relatively good picture summary of what's going on. And this talks about how to do the math, and we've already talked about that. And conductors and insulators, and then of course your own what we're going to do is we're going to minimize this. Uh, no. I'm going to click exit. We're going to minimize it. Hopefully. And we have the FET simulation for Ohm's Law. And I would encourage you to go to this. It is FETcolorado.edu sims Ohm's Law slash Ohm's Law underscore English HTML. And basically, this shows a relationship in a visual way of how things are going to, uh, how things are really going to work. So, in other words, we increase the potential energy. You'll notice that there's an increase of current. Resistance stays the same. Notice if we lower the resistance, the current increases and the voltage in decrease. Voltage increases a little bit, mostly stays the same. Okay, and you'll notice the battery change that takes place with the increase and decrease in voltage. And then also take a look at our resistor and what the particles are doing there. And then our arrows show the different amounts of current. So I'd encourage you to mess with that to show uh, inverse relationships and direct relationships with voltage, current, and resistance. Thanks.